You made it? You got on? I made it. Can you hear me? Oh my gosh, she made it. <laughs> Our guest artist made it. I'm so glad. Tiffany's fine art. Sometimes I can hate Max and technology. <laughs> I know, like just a second ago. So how'd you how'd you get through that glitch? Um, I I tried it on my phone and it wasn't working. So then I tried it on my laptop and it wasn't working. So then I just mm -hmm. went to my Mac and it finally worked. <laughs> on the phone, it wasn't working, and then what? And, and then, then I tried it on my laptop. And it did work. And it no, that one didn't work either. That one I installed Firefox on that one, but yeah. then that it couldn't connect to um, StreamYard, and so I was like, whatever. So I tried something else, and I just I went to my computer, my Mac, and it already had your Chrome. desktop. You went to your desktop. Yeah. Oh, they do say that the mo for using mobile devices, I never have a problem, but with mobile, I mean, I to host this, I have to be on a desktop or laptop, but whenever I get on somebody's panel, I can be mobile, but they do say it's in the experimental stages, so there's going to be glitches like that. Got it. So, so for you getting on your desktop is what, um, even your laptop didn't work? Yeah, yeah, for some reason. Well, I didn't have Chrome or Firefox installed in the first place on my laptop. Mm -hmm. So when I went to install it, for some reason, Chrome wouldn't install. So then I installed Firefox, but then that said that it couldn't connect to StreamYard. So then I said, screw it all. I just use my my big computer and it finally worked. So and that and you have a webcam set up. Yeah, well, I just use the webcam that's built into the computer. So this is like my backup. So the angle might be all off and all that, but <laughs> it works. Uh, do you want to fix the angle now, or is there a way to fix it? it, it I mean, it's my it's my big computer. I so see. I, I, I see. Move it. <laughs> and you started the painting already? This is probably about halfway done. Um, it's, I'll, I'll take it and move it closer to you guys. Yeah. Um, this is a, a sunset, obviously, but I need to fix the, the, the bottom right here. This all needs to be darker and lighter and the colors need to be more accentuated right there. And then I need to do um, the waves because there's nothing there. That's just plain raw canvas still. So. Yeah, I have a question about so you're putting it inside the shape of California or something? It's actually I've been working with this on my desk, uh just like flat on my desk, but so it would for you guys so it would be easier to see. I mounted it to a canvas and stuck it on my easel so I could have it propped up so you but guys it's, shaped, it's like a certain shaped canvas. It's um a piece of hardboard and it's just uh I have it gessoed. So it's the shape of California. Um, it is the shape of California. Okay, I, I, I didn't know if I was just um, being crazy. <laughs> no, it is actually the shape of California. That's um, it's where I grew up. It's where I'm from. So ah, okay. So I uh, I miss the ocean. So I decided that this one I wanted to do a very colorful because my last one was just pretty much all rocks and grass, and it was all browns and greens and I missed all the color, so I decided to do a very, very colorful scene this time around. Oh yeah, it is colorful. <laughs> so, um, do you, but you don't still live in California, right? No, not anymore. I live in Arkansas. Oh, okay. Big switch. So, all right, so she's doing. So are you you'd say you're painting on hardboard, or did you say cardboard? Hardboard. It's, yeah, like a, oh, how did you had to have somebody cut that, didn't you? Like masonite. Yeah, that's masonite. Yeah, well, that's like masonite. Yeah, it's um, that's it. There's a bunch of different um, I I guess play things that you can uh paint on. I mean, there's there's oil painting paper. There's um, right. You can paint on wood. I've done oil and encaustic on wood. I right. Yeah, and so how you had you know, that cut? Somebody cut that for you? Yeah. Well, this one I just bought it this way in the shape. Oh, of the you bought it that way. Yeah. Okay. 
And then I just, uh, I covered the whole thing in gesso so the oils wouldn't seep in right. to warp the board or anything. So the gesso kind of just seals it all. Do you have an Etsy shop? I do have an Etsy shop, yes. Uh, uh, okay, that's good to know. Well, if people are interested, yeah, that she does have an Etsy shop and um, I have a lot of things on my website, um, which is just- Well, you sell things off your website? I do sell things off my website as well. I have a shop there that I'm still kind of refining, um, but there are, I think there's five of my paintings um, on my Etsy shop right now. And then um, I also do prints of any of my originals that I've done. Oh, that's good, oh, I see. Yeah. So um, we want to feed. We might be able to see this better once I feature you. Once I get out of the picture, I'll be in the background. You won't even see me at all, and you'll be on the full screen. <sighs> so, um, and hopefully, we're gonna see this better. And um, you're halfway done this oil painting. She paints in oils, mm -hmm. and she's all halfway done this painting of California, which is you can see you can it's shaped in this shape of California, and um, so. Okay, so we can talk like I'm gonna put you on the big screen and then we're gonna we can talk to you maybe while you're painting Maybe that's gonna be hard. That's hard for a lot of people to get used to Yeah Let's see There you go Okay And I'm gonna check the chat like you I'll read the chat to you and stuff. Okay, perfect So she's in the she's at the halfway point of this painting, and let me see what what's going on in the chat. <laughs> Oil tiling. Oh, someone wants to know about the the what do you deal with? How do you deal with ventilation with the oil oil paint? Um, it's honestly not that bad. Um, the the windows are just i normally have them open i normally have a fan going in the bathroom that's in here uh but for ventilation wise it's really not that bad with oils it's worse with acrylics uh, really? no, the solvents are the what the oil paints aren't bad it's the solvents yes yeah and i i actually well so you if you get like cadmium or cobalt uh those pigments, I try not to get those colors on my hand. Yeah. yeah, because those can seep into you. Um, oh, but, yeah. but acrylics have the same colors with the cadmium and the green. Stay away from the cadmium yeah. and the white. Well, I should remember that. I think I have cadmium yellow. Yeah, they. Oh, mean, I didn't realize. I forgot. I didn't realize that. I should stay away from the cadmiums and what else. Yeah. Um, there's a couple different ones. Uh, of course, right now, all I can think about is the cadmium and the cobalt ones. Uh, oh, and the cobalt. And I love yeah. cobalt blue. Yeah, and I, I I use cobalt blue a lot, too. But the only really thing is just don't get on your hands. Obviously, you don't eat the paint. Or you just, I, when I do alcohol ink painting, I'm all, I always wear my gloves. So yeah. I yeah. always paint with latex gloves. It doesn't bother me. It bothers some people. But with alcohol inks, I'm always painting with my gloves, but with acrylics and with acrylics and oils, I never painted with gloves, but I probably would start doing that. Yeah, that's the only really big thing is uh, getting the oils on your hands. Um, but to breathe it in, it's really not that bad. It is the solvent. And all I do is I always wait to open up the solvent until um, afterwards. I have a whole ton of brushes here which a color, I just grab a new brush. And then at the very end when I'm finished um, is when I take it all in the bathroom. And I have uh, I have this container with a lid. So the fumes don't always stay open. And I just wash my brushes out really quickly. Um, and then I also have this, um, it's Master's Touch um, cleaning brush, which oh. is non-toxic. And so that's what I spend most of my time cleaning out my brushes with. So. I spend very, very little time with the toxins, toxin as much as I possibly. Ah, so, how do you thin your paints with linseed oil or something? Um, I have, which this is actually I sometimes try to stay away from, but I have Liquin Original. Oh, Liquin that that helps dry things faster, right? Yeah, this speeds up the drying time in pretty much twenty four hours. My paintings are done with this. 
but this does smell and that is the reason why I normally have a fan going or window oh, open, okay. just because of when I do use this one. But, um, but yeah, it's actually, that's the weirdest thing is I don't want to say that oils are less toxic than acrylic, yeah. but yeah. people have that huge misconception that oils are more toxic. But right. according to the National Cancer Administration, they issued um, a warning about acrylics in their drying process. They started putting tiny traces of formaldehyde in because it's a plastic. What That's what acrylics are. Yeah. When acrylics dry, it, it sets off the fumes of formaldehyde and something else. I can't remember the other thing, but I mean, there's two toxins that when it dries, that goes into the air and you breathe it. So I'm like, oh, okay. there's a good take. Okay. But you read that recently, like in the past year or so? Yeah. Yeah. In the past six months, actually. In the past six months. So, but I mean, it's, I've, I've contacted, um, I like golden acrylics and I like using um, gambling oils. Um, and I've talked to both of them about safety issues and everything like that. And the gambling and the golden both got back to me and said that they believe that their acrylics and oils are equally safe. That's what the golden said because they make um, uh what is it called? Um, they They're make golden. I know they make acrylics, but do they also make oils? Yeah, they make uh, Williamsburg handmade oils. So oh. this is their oil line, and Golden makes the Golden brand of. Right. Well, I've heard of that. That's a really good brand, the Golden. Mm -hmm. the yeah. So they believe that their acrylics and their oils are equally safe. Oh. Um, and gambling, gambling prides themselves on making a product that is super, super safe for. That's um, what I used to use the gambling turpentine or something, or paint thinner, or whatever they have. Yeah, gambling makes alkyde. They make all these other solvents. They make a solvent-free gel and um, a medium mix, and so they they do extremely well on keeping everything safe as well. Yeah. Oh, I hope that it, somebody uh, was talking about that. So that's why we addressed that question. Yeah. Cardboard. Yeah, go ahead, start painting. And if you missed it, she's she is painting her her um the surface she's painting on is shaped wood in the shape of California. And um. At some point, it'd be nice if you uh, could sh if take your, I mean, show it closer to the camera, like take it off the easel and hold it closer to the camera whenever you can. Yeah, no problem. Hi, Kevin Helming. Welcome. Harbinging, Harb. Harbinger for the for souls. Welcome. Oh, Bobby's here. Hi, Bobby. Hey, Bobby. Oh, you think he says you th he thinks you have to have Google Chrome for live stream. That's what you just downloaded, Google Chrome, right? Well, that's what um, it wouldn't let me download Google Chrome on my laptop for some reason. But I had already had Google Chrome on um, my desktop. So that's what I just switched to. And that's what I'm using. That's what actually finally got it to work. And Hippie Chick says, hi, Tiffany. Mm -hmm. and people are saying hello. And uh, oh. thanks, Green Wizard, for sending some of um, people from your stream I guess your stream had ended. Oh, Ian Jackson's here. 
Oh, here we go. He's a pretty, he's, a, he's an expert on watercolors, but let's see. He thinks it's mostly a, a chrome base of setup. Well, he's not talking about oil painting. Um, <laughs> yeah, chrome base setup. Yeah, that's what it is. StreamYard is probably chrome base. Oh, somebody, oh, hi, 320 Homestead. Says that StreamYard doesn't work in phones. I, th I think I've seen people have worked it in phones, but that's what Pickerick does. Hmm. I don't know about 320 Homestead. I don't know about that's true or not. Because if you know Pickerick one, I'm pretty sure he uses his he uses his phone a lot for um, StreamYard. And I think I said hello to you, Kevin, already. Kathleen Elliott, welcome. Oh, and hi, Green Wizard. Yeah, I think I said hello to you. Thank you for sending people over. Green, have her read for a... Uh, no, we don't need that now. Okay. <laughs> I think I'm getting into the part where you were still having problems. Okay. Yeah, it's never the funnest to watch me paint, but... <laughs> I always, I always work with a little tiny detail at a time, and it's so slow and boring. My husband is always like, okay, I'm done. I'm, I'm going to the other room. He's done watching you, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> Cause he likes to watch you for a little bit? Yeah, just because it's so but boring. You have to like, put on tons of layers. Well, they call it glazing or something, right? Yes. Yeah, this I've actually been working on uh, probably about two weeks now two maybe three weeks i've been working on this painting and you call it glazing all the layers are glazing yes yeah um they, it goes it goes back and forth um like the first layer that i put down was an underpainting and that was just trying to get rid of all the bright white canvas behind it because it's hard to see the values of the uh the colors uh -huh. um, and get everything right so the first one is just kind of like a sketch and to lay the base colors down and then the second time that are the then i go in and i refine it i started to make this a little bit different you can see that it looked further in the background um and then i have to let that dry and then i go in and then i do with a liner brush and i start doing little tiny details in the rocks and um defining all the little bushes that is in there and then the next time I went in and I did these waves with little tiny lines and these ones are when you start to glaze because you still want to see the color underneath, but you want to change it just a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and so and then that's kind of what I'm doing. Um, I know it might be a little hard to see, but when the wave gets really thin and, and kind of goes against the shoreline, you can still see the sand underneath it. Oh, so, yeah. So I'm kind of glazing in this little area right here, and I'm also laying down the shadow of the wave before I let that dry and then go in over top of it with the highlights of the wave. And I have to keep in mind like where the sun is at and where it's shining and where the like brightest parts of the waves are gonna be. And ha have you have you painted this subject a lot before? Um like the ocean, like ocean on the beach? I I think I've painted the ocean once or twice before. Yeah, it's all. Uh, yeah, I, I know. Did you have, it wasn't like a learning curve, trying to learn, learn that? Yes, everything is a learning curve, even now, because I've never done um, a wave at the top looking down at it, so. Normally I do like a crest of a wave that's like rolling yeah. over and the shine sun like shining through the wave. So, I mean, everything I do is always difficult and I'm scared to always like go in and start and start painting because I'm always afraid that I'm just going to jack it all up and there's yeah. no control Z in painting. I can't just go back to where it started. 
But with oil paint, you can you can um, fix mistakes. Yeah, um, I mean, with any painting, you know, acrylic or oils, all I really have to do if I do mess it up is just wait for it to dry, mix the color, and then just redo it again. Unless I've completely messed it up, which I have done on a painting I did recently. I did one for my dad for his birthday. He loves eagles. So I did um, an eagle flying over clouds, but I never had really good reference photos of clouds below hand and clouds above. So I kind of had to make the clouds that were below kind of out of my head. And I messed it all up. It took me like four months to do something that should have only taken a month. And I gessoed over it twice before I finally got the clouds looking the way I wanted them to. Yeah. Yeah. Do you go to school for art or are you a self, do you consider yourself self-taught? Um, I'd probably say both. Uh, That's what I say. I mean, I did go to school for art. I mean, I have a ma I do have the MFA. Mm -hmm. from Maryland Institute College of Art and um I it's like I feel like I'm I'm you're teaching yourself all the time it's like yes I learned some things in school but that that didn't like set me for life whatever I learned in school didn't set me for life I mean yeah I learned some things and then you go on and you still got to keep learning yes yeah I've got a I've got a bachelor's um I I have I went into media arts though and animation. So wow. I can do I can do a bunch of computer graphics and all that, but I started oil painting when I was nine. So from mm. why wow, you had parents a parent that was an oil painter? No, um, I just the way I got started, my mom was really big into arts and craft fairs. And this one time we went to an art and craft fair, there was, and I'm probably going to date myself if anybody knows who's, uh, who William Alexander is. Um, I do. He came before Bob Ross, right? He was before Bob Ross. Yeah. He yeah, was before Ross. Bob Ross. I used to watch him. Yeah. So he was my very first class. Um, and then Bob Ross came around and started doing the the TV ones um, and I was hooked and that's all my beginning work was Bob Ross. Oh, cool. And then um, for the longest time I put down my brushes and I just, you know, it was just life. You know, I went to college and I moved around and got married, had kids. And then I finally was, it's been about six months um, that I've picked back up my brushes Six months ago? Yeah. It's, it's you started oil painting again? So it started oil painting again, yeah. You had let, like, how many years go by? Um, It was probably about five years. Wow. Yeah. And you didn't do any art in five years? Um, I did a little bit of computer graphics and animation mm -hmm. stuff, but uh, as far as, you know, painting... I didn't do anything like that, um, but I, I told my husband that you know I miss it. It's painting is who I am. It's a part of me. It's what makes me truly happy. And um, so he, we had a a guest room in our house, and he tore apart the bed and the dresser, and he threw all my art stuff in here. And he's like, "You have your own studio now." So. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Six starting six months ago. Yeah. Well, the studio he just moved me in here about I don't know, probably a month ago. I was just painting in our living room, but I hated that because I do have two toddlers, and wow. I was like, "This is is I don't want you anywhere near any of this stuff." So, and that's. That's pretty hard with a mom with two little kids that are like, oh, I want to play with mommy and they can't come anywhere near me when I'm painting. So this little area of mine is pretty nice. So, uh, I'm getting, hello, Alford's Journey. 
and Trav, welcome. Deidre, hello. And um, and let's see, anybody else know? And um, can you can you bring that? Uh, can we see it closer to the camera? Yes. I mean, can you, can you stop whenever it's time? Whenever you. But it's not attached yeah. to that canvas, right? You just have it leaned up against this, it. This is well for right now because it would just fall off. I have a little command strip up here that's holding. <laughs> But it's not it's not meant to be exhibited like that right no no it's not going to when i um when i'm done it's just going to be this board it's just like if i can i can pull this up off the canvas it's just the top right. of the hat so it doesn't fall right everybody so she's painting on shaped board heart i mean shaped wood wooden board that is shaped in the shape of California because she was raised, born and raised in California and she doesn't live there now, but, and so it's not going to stay on that white canvas. She just ha has it um, leaned up against it. So a lot of things about California, like the sunset and the rocks and the ocean is beautiful. Let's see what, what do people say? Um, Love, lovely painting, Tiffany. Oh, it says Elf Lord Journey. Someone painted their mom's or their mom's bike in oil paints and it got all over their pants because it never dried. <laughs> That's Did awesome. you read the chat? Yeah, yeah, I have the chat <laughs> up on the side. <laughs> okay, you can read the chat. Yeah, every once in a while, I mean, you could get so caught up in the chat, so I try not to. <laughs> I know. I have to be in charge of that. You have to do what you. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for showing us up close. So. <laughs> Thank you for all of you saying it's beautiful. And you Ian know. says he's going to date himself even more. He used to watch Nancy Kaminsky in the late in the in the 1970s do painting. Oh. <laughs> I, I don't know about maybe she was only uh, Nancy Kamensky might have only been in uh, the UK Ian because Ian I don't know I don't know that you're I don't know that you're older than me I don't know what our age difference is but oh Trav says wow amazing work thank you Peter says it's beautiful I like the colors Oh, I see what you're saying. Please, that girl says, I painted my bike with my mother's oil paint. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Oh, it's his bike with his mom's oil paints. Yeah. Oh, somebody says it looks like Big Sur. The Big Sur area. It is. Off of Highway 1. It's exactly oh, okay. that. You're right. It is the Big Sur area. California Coast off of Route 1, you said? Yeah, off of Highway 1. And it was That's my right. favorite drive. I would always start at Monterey, and I'd drive up Highway 1 um, and drive all along the coast. And actually, that's always the way I went from L.A. back home. Oh, so this is part of, like, what the scenery was from that favorite drive of yours? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I've got millions and millions of reference photos of all along Highway 1, so I decided to paint. Oh, Highway 1 goes all along the coast? Yeah, it goes from, well, it doesn't go, actually, I don't know how far up it goes, but um, whenever I would visit uh, Texas or Arizona, I would drive through to Highway 1 um, in L.A., and then I would drive all the way up past Big Sur, past Monterey, and then I would head in there. You can head into like Gilroy to 101 and then up into like the central California, which I probably lost you guys if you've never been to California. <laughs> but yeah, I used to drive, drive a lot. Oh, okay, Ian, so that Kaminsky, um, so and so Kaminsky, she was from 
New York City in the USA. Oh, Ian's going to put a link in. Oh, and I got to now everybody listen. Tiffany has fewer than 100 subscribers. My goodness, she deserves a lot more. So, oh, let me put the um let's say we're going to put the link for her channel in and then I'm going to put pop this banner up. I'm going to pop this banner up and then we're going to put a link for her channel in. And I know many of you are enjoying um, her painting, so you really need to join her channel. Here we go. Thank God I found it. Okay, read that banner. That's the name of her channel, but I'll put we'll put the link in too. Let's help her get to a hundred at least. Put your name in, Tiffany. In. Oh, can you type your name in, and then they they said that. I could pop the link in, but it, a bet, another way too, if, can you type your name in and then that way people can also, um, that, there'll be two ways for people to be able to subscribe to you. Yeah, so you just say, say something like, hello, here, here's my channel. There you go. Okay, she just and I'm, I'm about to pop her link in. So there's two different ways to be able to subscribe. Oh, she's almost at a hundred. She has eighty-seven. I think we can get her there today. She's at eighty-seven. Let's see if we can get her there today. I know I lost my first subscriber yesterday and I was like, oh, what the heck? Oh my goodness, you better get used to that. I'm <laughs> up and down all the time. Are you kidding? And then if they do a purge, they mm -hmm. you you'll lose like 10 or 15 subscribers. Oh my gosh. <laughs> if they do a purge where they say, like, oh no, they do a purge where where um if there's if you have dead subscribers that have not been active with your channel, they're gonna get rid of some of them. What? They go through and do a purge every now and then, yes. And I've really? lost and, and one time when they did a purge, I lost like twenty subscribers. What? They shouldn't do that. They have to do that. They haven't done it recently. <sighs> but but you you'll see your numbers go up and down all the time. I mean, normally that's how it is. Everybody's numbers usually go up and down. I mean, I I probably get that, and if you had like a hundred thousand or maybe even a couple thousand, you know, you may not notice it as much. But I look at my numbers like every single day, and oh, I'm, yeah, I look at mine every few days. I have to, I document it. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and it was just like I woke up the other day and I was like, "What the heck? I lost one." So <laughs> Like, I know it's going to happen, but I was just like, that sucks. <laughs> You're lucky it's just one. Oh, uh, that's true, I guess. All right, I'm about to pop her link in now. I got it. Um, Did you say someone on here does watercolor? Oh yeah, oh Ian Jackson is expert on watercolor. 
I should have, uh, a friend of mine today uh, called me up. She does cakes and like cupcakes and cookies and everything. She has her own business. And she called me up and said one of her clients wants um, these flowers painted on the fondant for her daughter's first birthday. She didn't want them like painted on edible paper. So she called me up and was all, can you paint them for me? And I was like, okay, sure, you know. And the food coloring that she used was almost identical to what reminded me of watercolor. And I don't really paint in watercolor. And so it was, I have a newfound respect for people that paint in watercolor because that stuff is so runny and I just had no idea how to control it. Oh, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah. It's a different process. Yeah. Well, I knew like the base, I knew, I at least I think you're supposed to start with the lightest color and work to the darkest color. You think that's how it's supposed to go? Yeah, but that is. That's kind of the way I had to tackle the flowers. They turned out pretty good. I was proud of them for never painting on a cake before, but... Oh, so on the cake, you had to use some kind of watercolor substance? Yeah, it was, um, it's like food coloring that I had to paint with. Um, and I mean, if you've ever used food coloring anything, it's very, very water. All right. And then she even diluted it down further with water. So <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> that was a fun experience. And it worked. You and it worked out. Yeah, I did. I did practice um, flowers before I ended up actually painting on the cake. Um, but yeah, it worked. I got it down. <laughs> the client was happy with them, so I guess that's what really counts. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's what they think. Like you could do something, and you're thinking like. I think it looks pretty good. And then the, the client might say, no, that's not what I thought. And I'm like, I don't do that many commissions. Um, um, I've turned down. I, I remember turning down a couple commissions a long time ago. I did somebody when I was in college, um, when I was studying for a, for like when I was in college, but studying for the bachelor's degree in art, like somebody wanted me to do colored pencil drawing of them as a, on their wedding day. Mm. And I'm like, and I'm like, uh, I, I don't think I could, I, I, I said at first I could do it. And then I said, nah, I don't think I can do this. And then since then I did, I haven't had that many commissions, but, um, and then I had a commission about five years ago that turned out all right. That, that turned out fine. And, um, but, um, there's a certain way to do commissions where you can, where you show them ahead of times, each step of the way you show them like what your, you know, what rough sketches, then they approve it. They initial it. Mm -hmm. so every, all different major steps of the way, like they, and then they got to approve the color palette. And then so that by the time it's done, it's like, they can't say, well, that's not what I wanted. Like, cause they approve different steps of the way. Yeah. Yeah. I've done just a couple commissions, but they're just so, so stressful. And yeah, that's what I love, yeah, I love that, you know, that the customer gets something that they're happy with and that's just yeah. for them, you know, cause if I couldn't do this and I really wanted a, my favorite spot in where I grew up, you know, I would want it perfect. But oh. the way things are in someone's head, I mean, even as an artist, it's so hard for us to get down the way it looks in our head. So as a client, you know, they have a certain image in their head. And when they try to explain it to you, we see something different than they do. So we put our own twist on it and it may not be what they wanted. And it's just, it's just so, so stressful. <laughs> right. I think though, if you break it down into the steps, mm -hmm. it makes it less stressful, which I had never thought of that before, but uh, a YouTube artist friend of mine, um, she actually has a video on it and um, how to break it down into steps. And that makes sense. That would, I think that would make it less stressful. Yeah. Well, and that's what I did with one of my last ones. Um, it was after I graduated college. So I did um, 
uh, almost painted like picture of what they wanted in Photoshop. And then I sent it to them and was like, is this okay? And so then I just replicated the photo onto the canvas. So, I mean, they got a pretty good idea of what the painting was gonna look like. But prior to that, I mean, I just, I, I don't think when I first started, obviously when I first started painting, internet wasn't around. Um, and it, it was it was hard to get other other ideas that other artists were doing. I'm so happy how you can like collaborate with other artists now. Guess what? You need one more for a hundred. Are you serious? Yep, yep. We're gonna flood the chat with emojis in a minute. That's how we celebrate. That is so awesome. And you're gonna get over a hundred today. You guys are the best ever. <laughs> They are, you guys are, you guys are amazing and wonderful. Thank you so much, you guys. Hmm. That is really cool. Let's see. I'm just waiting for somebody. Ah, uh, somebody just cracked out the emoji champagne. <laughs> Let me check. Let me check. Did you get a hundred? Let's say. Can one of my moderators confirm that? Grayscale painting. Oh, he's already saying congratulations. I suppose so. Let me just let me double check. Yep, you got 101. You're going to get more than 100 today. Uh, with emojis, everybody. I would put a little smiley face on my thumb and do that, but with oh, that, I got, I got, oh, I got, I got oh, it now. I'm not doing <laughs> I only do that when no one sees my face on camera. <laughs> it's hands only, and you see what I, I don't do that, and I don't do that with my. Some, somebody was saying, I hope I see, I hope I see that dancing thumb today. <laughs> I'm like, that's cute, but <laughs> it is cute. So I haven't done it when I do, uh... when I when it's not me doing my artwork and stuff. But okay, let me get back to the chat. Let's see, flood the chat with emojis, everybody. Big congratulations. You guys are so great. Awesome. Thank you for helping her out. Yes, thank you. You guys are all wonderful. And it was just a few weeks ago you were at under 50? Yeah, I think so. It was just a few weeks ago. She was. I think I saw her when she was at 48 subscribers. Yeah. Yeah, oh, there we go. Bobby McNutt balloons and confetti. Yep, I'm gonna balloon confetti, hearts, thumbs up. I'm I'm flooding the chat right now. And there we go. Michael McReynolds, so nice to see you. Yes, oh, Michael McReynolds, we just got Tiffany here, just hit 100 subscribers. Now she's gonna get more than 100 today. She's a very good oil painter. Champagne toast, sweet girl showing us champagne toast with martini glasses. Sweet. <laughs> And fireworks and shooting stars. Awesome. Oh, 
Okay, awesome. Let's see how much over a hundred we can gather. We can get some new people in here. That's I guess the only way we're gonna do it. We get some new people coming in here. Thank you, Grayscale Painting. Nice emojis. Oh, Michael McReynolds. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, oh Michael, I hope you're going to get better soon. Get lots of rest and do what you need to do to get better. I'm glad you joined us today, Michael. That's awesome. And keep flying your drones. I know that makes you happy. My dad has a little drone he likes to fly. Really? Does it have a camera on it? Um, I don't know. I don't think it does. I'm honestly not 100% sure. He's just a little boy with a bunch of boy toys. Is, it, is he retired now or what? Not yet. He's hoping to be pretty soon. He wants to, um, him and my mom both want to move this way and uh, be closer to the grandkids. Oh, that's nice. Oh, you have an invitation here from Ian Jackson, who's the expert watercolorist. He's he's from the UK, and um, he come he um, he's he's my feet. I mean, he's my guest artist almost every Friday. Whenever he can make it, I leave Fridays open for him. Mm -hmm. If you want to watch him on Fridays, four p.m. and um, but, and he just said. Because he he kind of co he co-hosts a Facebook art group called the Art Bar. He says, Tiffany, come to the Art Bar later when we are live, and we will get we will get some more art friends for you. Mm, okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So you guys. So wait a minute. Today's not Monday. So wait, third. So Ian, Ian, you guys, Art Bar is going live tonight. And she's never going to catch that link. So how are we going to do that? Um, um, it should be, if I go to your video, it should be in there. The replay. He, the, to the replay, you mean? Yeah. Wouldn't that or you could go in and type, click this link right now and join the art bar. And then um, it's, the art, it's, it's an art bar Facebook art group. It's under Ian Jackson. He, he has a blue wrench. He's in blue. Ian Jackson. He has the link right now for the art bar. Okay. You got it? Subscribed. She's, oh, she put in a... Okay, Ian. She um put in her request to join the group. And then let's see, we are live and we will get, oh, maybe he doesn't mean tonight. Later. Do you mean today, later, Ian? Later today, you're going to go live? You guys are going live on Art Bar today or are you talking about Mondays? I know because Mondays you guys usually do that. Oh, here we have somebody else. Michael just done, came in here, and he wants to subscribe. Okay. I'm here, Michael. Here's the link. I just read Kevin's post as an art bar, a place where you can drink while painting. <laughs> I know they just make it. He's just making it that's, that's awesome.
Okay, Michael McReynolds, I'm going to put the link in. Okay, Michael McReynolds, there's the link. Grayscale Painting says, oh, he's going to be my guest artist on Monday. Grayscale Painting says, this is wonderful that everyone helped her out. I have to take my leave. Nice to meet you, Tiffany. Nice to meet you, too. Thank you. Grayscale Painting. He, he paint, um, I think I've only seen him paint landscapes. He can paint landscapes, excellent, awesome landscapes. And I think he says he does mostly, he paints in oils and acrylics, but mostly acrylics. Yeah, there's a lot of pluses for painting in acrylic. I normally always do my uh, my block-in phase or my underpainting in acrylics before. Oh, I you do? Just because they dry so fast. It's just so yeah, nice. Yeah. I do it on acry acrylics first off, then I could just go right in with oils over top of them and just start my painting instead of having to wait a day for my paint to dry before I can start it. But with the liquid, that's amazing. You can speed up oil painting to even dry in one day. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's pretty awesome. So what part are you working on the painting? What part of the painting are you working on now? So I finished, at least I'm pretty sure I finished with all of the, um, the shadow part of all the waves. Um, and then I'm gonna go in now with a whiter, um, with my titanium white, and I'm gonna do the crest part of the wave where it's kind of like going over, that's where oh, yeah. That's where it's the lightest. So I'm gonna do that along this whole side. Um, and then probably have to wait for that to dry before I go in on the top of that and do my brightest brights uh, and just do like little tiny highlights of everything. Yeah. And you finished the rocks, is that right? I've done, I'm done with these. I might be done with this one. I'm not sure. My biggest problem is I just keep going in and adding detail and I love my liner brush so much that I have a tendency to overdo detail, <laughs> but if I is it, really, is it really overdone or doesn't it just look good with a lots of details? To a point, um, I can do that with this rock down here because it's closest to the viewer. But if I start adding too much detail into these back here, it's gonna bring them forward. And it's gonna, because the closer you are to something, the more crisp and detailed it is, the further you are, oh, the more that's distorted right. it gets and fuzzy it gets. So my my big problem is knowing when to stop. I have yeah. to, I have to learn to stop painting before I put too much detail into it. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be done with these three. Pretty sure, I'm not sure. Those, I, I can't see that good, but you mean those three rocks? Yeah, yeah, there's three little rocks that protrude off of the inland. Um, and then there's another little rock here, and then there's the bottom rock that takes up the bottom half right here. Um, and this one I have to go in and I have to do a lot more highlights, a lot more shadows, and I have to um, I have to make the colors uh, brighter down here because that also shows that it's closer to the viewer. When you um, add a lot of grays to coloring, that's how you get the distance look. So this right. this raw graying, graying down your colors. Yeah, like when you add a lot more like grayish to the um, to your colors and you tone down the colors so they're not so bright, yeah. you push them back in the distance. 
Ian so, Jackson saying that you're doing aerial perspective. It's hard for me to it's hard for me to see this, but um, yeah, I, I think you're he's right. Kind of. Is it it's still kind of? of? It's kind of like an aerial perspective. These rocks are really tall, and this part that I'm at over here, this is kind of like an um a lookout point, and so uh, yeah. it is above looking down at wow. it, but yeah. it's also looking out at the rest of it. So I'm kind of like even with the horizon line. Um, so it's not exactly like an aerial view pointing down directly, oh, okay. but it's, I don't know, I guess close enough. We're getting a lot of compliments here. Um, like with Linda says that, um, love how she did a, a painting of California and, um, and Harbinger, Harbinger for souls that th that is brilliant work. Oh, thank you. And this is your first. This is your first time ever being. Like, is this your first time being on a live stream at all? Yes. <laughs> Listen yes. to that, everybody. It's your first time ever being live, ever. Yes. Um. Super duper, extremely nervous right now, but everybody's got to start somewhere, right? You don't even act nervous. I don't. Oh, that's awesome. No. <laughs> Believe me, I get some people that are, they, they, they get crazy nervous and you can totally see it. <laughs> and I totally think like my voice is shaking and I'm no, like, I don't sound like it's shaking. Yeah, this is, okay. And it's weird too, my whole life, I never showed anyone my paintings because I just didn't know if I was any good at all so it's only been in the last you know six months and i think i started my youtube channel in july so that's the first time i actually ever started showing anyone my work and i'm just it's it's really cool when someone says oh it's really pretty you know and because you, you didn't get your bachelor's degree in art i i got it in media oh, that's art. Right. animation mm -hmm. computer yeah. Computer art, computer digital art animation. Yeah. So um, I did a lot of animation stuff. Like I created characters that could move across the screen and, you know, and I've learned how to do all that. And um, that was what I focused on because I really love the computer aspect of it. Uh, and I just kind of, in a sense, gave up on painting until I realized that this is what I truly love to do. So I'm, I'm happy that I get to go do it again. Did you take any classes? In other, other than when I was nine till about 15, um, every once in a while, my parents would put me in a Michaels class where they would show me Bob Ross. But right. other than that. Oh, uh, you haven't taken like any, um, I mean, college classes or online, online classes for oil painting? No. No, I didn't do any um, classes like that for online. Um, I did take a painting class in college but they, um, because of all the harsh chemicals and everything, they won't allow you to open up a solvent um, like turpentine or any kind of paint thinner in a class. They didn't care. Back, oh, back when I was in college, that was a, that, there was no rules about that. Yeah. So the only thing they would allow you to paint with in school was acrylics because you could wash them with water right. or you could do like airbrush or watercolor or something like that. So... I, again, never got a practice with oils, but it did introduce me to um, oil pastels, which I really love, and I'll do those every once in a while, too. And it introduced me to acrylics, which I hated when I first started, but I'm slowly starting to understand them and get a little bit better with them. Yeah, because oil painting gives you the time for blending, is that part of why you like it? 
Yeah, yeah, the, the dry time. I hate the fact that back then it would take a week to dry, but now with liquid, um, I love the fact that it could be dry in 24 hours. And it gives you, go ahead. But, um, is it a lot, I mean, what does, it has a lot to do with like the blending or what? Like being able to work, with, cause you can work with layers in acrylic, so. Yeah, you yeah. You can slow down the drying of acrylic, just like you can speed up the drying of oil. Yeah. And whenever I work in acrylic, that is what I do. I have a ton of, uh, slow drying mediums that I put in at all of my acrylics when I work in them. Um, just because the blending is what I got so used to doing. I could just lay down a bunch of color and then, you know, 20 minutes later, go in and blend them all together. But yeah. with acrylics, it's dried in like two seconds. I mean, unless you have an airbrush and you slowly mist it you can keep acrylics as wet for as long as you want but it's just a lot harder to keep them that way than it is with oils and like with like with linda says i lived in california for many 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 years and she misses it yeah there are parts that i miss i'm not sure if i'll ever move back there because it is just insanely pricey. Oh. Um, it, it's just crazy pricey. But there are certain views and the weather, you can't beat the weather. That's the that's the one thing. Yeah, all of California doesn't have great weather. Is I heard San Diego like has the best weather. Yeah, San Diego is pretty much summertime, beautiful, 24-7. Like every day. Yeah, it's LA is a little bit like that as well. Um, then you get up to about the middle part of California and you can get um, a lot more rain. Everything's pretty dry. Uh, the further yeah. north you go, the more rain you get. Uh, and then you could go up towards Sacramento um, and up in the mountains up there and it becomes, I mean, they, they can get snow. Uh, that's the one thing I did really like about California is almost any time of the year, you could go to the desert, the beach, the mountains and snow, or you can go to a really populated city. And it's from where I lived, all of that was between 30 to 60 minutes to get to. Yeah. So, and that, then there's lots of mudslides and and forest fires. <laughs> yes, yes. In parts of California, there the uncontrollable are, fires. There are a lot of forest fires in there. It's just because California is so dry, and they don't consider it desert. No, no it's not no. desert. No, I guess it's not desert. No. We do have. I mean, there is a lot of different deserts in California. Um, there's like Death Valley. Uh, Death Valley. That was the first time I ever visited California was Death Valley. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My mom, when I was young, my parents thought it'd be fun to go vacation there to see what Death Valley was like. And I was like, this <laughs> like I was not impressed. I'm like, I don't want to go to a desert to, I mean, I can appreciate a desert, but I'm like, I don't want to do that on my vacation as a little kid who wants to go swimming and do everything fun. And you're like, yeah, oh, right. in the desert. I'm like, that doesn't sound fun as a 13 year old kid. Right. Oh, and um, Ian Jackson says there's no art bar Facebook group to today but maybe tomorrow so hopefully they're going to accept your uh re a request to join quickly and then and then you'll be updated of what their activities are okay because he's inviting you he says if you join one of their especially if you join one of their live streams he, he i guess he's gonna um promote you a little bit oh that's so sweet <laughs> thank you <laughs> Oh, and then Elf, Elf, Elf Lord's Journey says, 
glad she came out of the closet. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Because you really didn't start showing your artwork till like, I mean, what, in the past six months? About six months ago is when I first started posting it on, um, I have a Facebook page uh, yeah. that that's when, and it was mostly friends and family, but uh, even a lot of my family um, never really saw what I used to do. So that was pretty cool. Um, and then in July is when I started my YouTube channel. Oh, okay. So, and that's July, we're all just talking about like one and a half, two months ago. Yeah. So that's when I guess the world could have access to looking at it, which seems very scary. <laughs> oh, Oh, let's see. I wonder who's still here. We have nine people watching. We we used to, we had a bunch more. Like people can't stay. People usually can only drop by. You know, you can't expect people to watch like a two-hour live stream. It's yeah. too much for people. So what happens is people come in waves. Like the first wave comes in and leaves, and then uh, now I'm waiting for like the second, the second or third wave to come in. Pretty much, I guess the third wave to come in right now. Like it. it it um, drops and I mean it um, that's how it works because most people can't watch a whole live stream for two hours yeah so let's see I have that third wave come second or third wave comes in. Now you're working on the water now. Is that what you said? Yeah, I'm glazing in um, uh, where the the crest of the water is crashing up against the um, the sand. So I'm glazing. In that. Look at reference photos. Um, normally I have reference photos. Uh, I did when I first started this. I took uh, about five or six different photos that I really liked and I kind of just mushed them all together because I knew what I wanted um, it to kind of look like, but I couldn't get everything in just one reference photo. So I took the, the sun and all the colors from one reference photo that I had and then a couple different rocks that I liked and I kind of just moved them and put them together and kind of just threw it all together. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's but that's a good way of working. Yeah. So, I mean, I really like um, working off of my own reference photos, so I don't have to worry about any, like, copyright issues or anything like that. But I, I also don't like just copying my reference photos. I, just, I like adding little things here and there to kind of change them up to... I don't know, kind of make them my own, I guess you could say. Yeah, I know, yeah. I have a, I have a really good website that, I mean, there's a really good website that I really love using a lot, pixabay.com, where it's most mm -hmm. all the photos, all the photos are copyright free, but, and most of them are, um, and, I mean, all of them are no attribution required, of, and, um, and most all of them can be used for commercial use, but um, and just a few of them are editorial use only. You have to you have to just check, but most of them are um, most of them are for commercial use. No no copy. I mean copyright free and no attribution required. And I'm I just use like you know for things that I know that I'm never going to be able to take a picture of. <laughs> yeah, I'm never going to take. They're just so. 
it um it's so helpful to me i've used i use that site like so much i've used that site so much then yeah. there's unsplash.com then there's other people that love unsplash.com that's another one but i really like pixabay.com oh look the ian says no, oh, he says he's good. Pecan Baby just came in. She's from um, Ireland. And uh, how are you doing, Pecan Baby? They're five hours ahead of us. Mm. Most of the day. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Ian Jackson. The, the other one is um, Paint My Photo. But you have to give attribution to the, um, yeah, to the photographer and mm. whatever. So I just find it easier to use Pixabay.com. Yeah. I, I've have you ever heard of Paint My Photo? I haven't. Where people, like, they, they post, it's the website, it's a website where um, individual people, like, post their photographs. And they allow, and it's especially there for to allow artists to use and paint, paint, paint their photo. I mean, paint their photo, use their photos for painting, mm -hmm. or reference, you know, the reference point, or paint it like totally like it is, or just for reference. And but you do have to um, give them credit. So mm -hmm. there might be some other there might be some other um, rules involved too. Yeah. Pecan baby, she's she's in shock. She spent a fortune today, not expected. And she's doing great. Thanks. Okay. Like ten thirty where you where you are. Yeah, Pecan Baby, since you just came in, she um, is, a, Tiffany is an oil painter, and you can re see the banner. We got her over 100 today. She was under 100. We got her over 100 today. Subscribers. Everybody was really great. And, um, and she's working on a painting of, she has, that is actually cut out wood in the shape of California. Because she was, uh, you were born there? Yeah. She was born and raised there. And um, so it's um, wood cut that's shaped like the California. And she's painting, um, she, she's an oil painter. She She's painting oils. Are you, did nobody commissioned you to do that, right? No. No, this is all just no. me. But, oh, you post that on your website and maybe in your Etsy shop or something? Yeah, yeah, it's going to be um, definitely on my website and my Etsy. Pecan Baby says, this is a stunning painting. Definitely the lady has talent. Oh, thank you. How long have you had your Etsy shop? Um, I think I've only had my Etsy shop for about a month. Oh, wow, just a month. I've had mine for a little over a year. And I've, I've, I've followed a, two different Etsy experts, mainly one Etsy expert. But her, what she does, which the things that she says to do, I tried doing and um, 
Oh, that's your phone? Yeah, sorry, that was loud. <laughs> anyway, so she's helped out a little bit. I follow um, mainly one at the expert and, and a little bit of another, and they've helped out a little bit, but um, I'm going to give it another shot with a new collection that I'm actually stocking my store with right now. I'm taking everything out that was in there before, putting all new stuff in. My, and my Etsy shop is going to reopen on Friday, September 27th. And um, so I'm letting everybody, mainly, you know, there's where can you advertise to? Like, because faith, I, it never works to advertise on Facebook. But they don't like your links. They don't like, links have to be in the comments. So mainly, mainly you can only advertise to your email list. And I do, I did manage to grow my email list to 500 people. So I can market to them. And then I also, people in my YouTube community might be interested also. And um, oh, so Ian wants to know California is the golden state, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's what they call it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Ian, he says the golden coast. No, yeah, California is the golden state. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what they call it. I should know that, <laughs> right? Because, um Florida is the sunshine state. Sunshine. Yeah. New Jersey is the garden state. Pennsylvania is the keystone state. And I don't know anything. I don't know any other ones. We have some people... They're not, now see the chat's become less active, but we still have people watching. So a lot of times people li are listening and they're doing other things. They can't chat. They can't be active in the chat. So what does it say? That's what you just wrote? Are you talking to me? I just got a message from you. Yes. Okay. If you, if you, if you, she, I think she, Tiffany has to go soon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Zach Rule says he's listening. So, and, oh, here comes some people. Florida is the hurricane state. Oh, yeah, I know, but not really. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, oh, here, Buzzard, hello. What a fun, what a fun what? Segment, Diana. And Tiffany, take a bow, old beer buzzard says. Uh -huh. a don't get be don't be fooled by his um, name. He's a, he's actually a, he's actually a poet. Uh, but, okay. Yeah, okay, so I think that Tiffany has to go soon. <laughs> yeah, my husband had to run out and the kids are knocking at the door now. Oh, they're knocking at the door. You hear that? You have toddlers? <laughs> yeah. She has toddlers. She has to go. So we thank you everybody for um thank you so much everybody for helping Tiffany out. We got her over a hundred. Yeah, thank you so all much, so Tiffany. Much. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for um everybody loved I think everybody loved um watching you paint and learning more about you. And uh, you know, people are gonna subscribe to your channel. Okay. Oh I'm about to I'm I can't. I shouldn't stop my stream. We're just saying bye to you. Okay. You're fine. I'm about to turn off. I'm like, cause I'm. I go till. I try to go till six if I can. Yeah. I, okay. You see, her husband just left. You hear that knocking? Her kids are knocking at the door. Whenever you have to leave, go ahead, Tiffany. Thank you so much, Tiffany. All right. Thank you all so Do you much. Know how to leave? Do you know how to leave or? Oh, I don't want to pop myself out. I no. Oh, yeah, leave. Well, I can get you. Do you want me to pop you out, or can you? You know how to do it. I think I. It says hit the red button. You hit the red button for exit. Thank oh, you so much. Everyone. <laughs>